is Quinn Roberts, and I have built HMS Terror here, a 112-gun sh uh, ship of the Royal Navy. It's based off of HMS Victory, and it has a full interior, as well as just many things going on on the deck. This is such a fantastic ship model. Uh, I love that you based it on the HMS Victory, such, such an iconic ship uh, from British history. So before we take a look at the interior, why don't you take us through kind of the, uh, the sail area here and kind of the top deck, and then we'll, we'll take a look inside. All right, well, there's, um, the captain is right there, and just there's all sorts of just crazy things going on on the deck. A boat is being launched to take the officer to shore somewhere and there are a number of officers on the quarter deck. The quarter deck was mainly used by the officers over there is where the boats were kept on the open part of the deck and then there is some gunnery practice with the red coats over there and just more and of course Jack Stone is being escorted to the brig. Now for the, the color scheme on this ship, is this the, the color of the, the HMS Victory or how did you decide to go with this? Yeah, this is HMS Victory's color and this is also the classic Nelson check, which is commonly used in British warships of the era. That's great. So what was your research like then for this build as you were putting this together? I used a book of cross sections of HMS Victory, online research about it, um, Google Earth, the street view. Just it, quite a bit of research went into it. Yeah, I love that with these historical builds. Another really important part of it is the back of it here, which has so much great detailing with these gold pieces. So if you can, take us through some of the parts you were able to use there. I really like the, that golden chain part. It just makes such a great detail. And also the telescopes make really good pillars, like the decoration on Victory. There are the three lamps like Victory too that have that use window panes for the glass in them. A lot of one by one tiles and just other various gold parts I saw that I thought, hey that would make a good decoration. So Yeah. And it, and it works really well, especially the railings and everything there. The decorations look fantastic. So uh, if you can then maybe let's take a look inside. I don't know how, how many decks down can you go with this? I probably could take all of them apart, I okay. would think. That'd be great if you can. What we'd love to love to see what you have inside. So we start with just this top section. Yeah, I take all the masts off so they don't fall and make a big mess. And over here. This reveals the first detailed section of interior, so take us through some of these rooms here. This is the captain's cabin, and there's also the master's cabin right there and another officer's cabin next to the steering wheel, which is a double wheel and had a rope wrapped around there and the compass. And this is all the captain's cabin. There's a hallway. That's the captain's dining room. That's his bedroom and that's the captain's day cabin and the captain is a collector of antiquities and other strange oddities. So. Yeah, look at all of these fantastic pieces you use to detail in here. Can you point out some of the, the favorite artifacts you were able to include? I like the wolf head. The wolf head is just a good part and there's his portrait. Um, that is the mask of King Kahuka from the Pirates line of, of the 90s. The, he's got a claw leg bathtub, odd snake mask. I like that globe. Oh dear. And there's just various weapons and all sorts of crazy stuff in there. The types of things you would collect traveling around the world on a ship like this. <laughs> Great. So what's what's below that then? This is the upper gun deck. I need a. Some giant anchors here? Yes, Victory had four anchors, each um, brought back in by a capstan. Uh, 
So here's the upper gun deck. It doesn't have much of an interior, and it is kind of a mess from our travels, but. This is still fantastic uh, for a lot of builds. This this looks really great. So what it looks like there's a lot going on in kind of this middle section here. Yes, that's the kitchen. It has all the features that a kitchen on Victory would. And a one-legged cook. Over there is the sick bay. And back here is the Admiral's great cabin with his secretary and paperwork office. The, the sleeping cabin, his dining room, and his day cabin in the back with a map table. That map is so cool with the micro ship there. You use like the the decorative shoulder element for there. The epaulets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I can take this deck off. By Real quick, before you do that, can you talk about the cannon design you used for this? Because there's tons of cannons throughout this. This is actually one of three different types. I designed it uses these wedge plates and just, it uses pretty basic pieces that I had a lot of so I could use them to make a cannon. Yeah, when you're, when you're making so many of one build, you want something that has a lot of easy to access pieces. Yeah, it's very repetitive and somewhat boring to make all the cannons, <laughs> but. All right, well then I have to take this. There's the bowsprit. Everything pulls out pretty easily? Yeah, pretty easily. And here's the middle gun deck with a different design of cannon using a stud shooter, which represents the gun lock. And just, there's a lot of characters in there. Jack Sparrow, some stormtroopers, islanders chasing a guy. There's some minifigures working the capstan and the manger at the bow where the officers' animals are kept. And there's the officers' wardroom, the officers' bathroom, and the first lieutenant's cabin. You've got some beautiful food laid out there for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, when it, when it came to the soldiers, were you trying to match up the, the uniforms from the, the era of the HMS Victory? Well, there's not too many available uniforms. The most accurate is Admiral Broadsides or Governor Broadsides from the, eight, uh, the 89 Pirates range, but those are super expensive, so I couldn't get those. But they would make really good torsos. But I just used the blue coat torsos. And the red coats are, represent the Marines. No, you you kind of work with what you've got. Obviously, some of those parts can be very expensive, so that's understandable. Well, what's the, the structure? You've got some like Technic beams going through here. How do you kind of keep these decks together? So there is there are two Technic beams running through the deck in the under those deck plates. The decks are one brick and two plates high to make them very strong and. And then this Technic supports the sloped deck here, the sloped um, yeah, thing. Because you've, you've got you've to get that whole shaping to the whole thing. So, you know, it's, it's, you've got to get some, like, uh, diagonal pieces in there, kind of that sloping look. Yeah. It was hard to represent the original shaping of HMS Victory, but... I think you achieved it very nicely. So is there more below this, then? Yes. <laughs> Each deck takes up a whole length of table space down here. Yeah. And then there's a battle scene in here. There's some people preparing for a broadside on this, and over there it's just complete chaos. And there's the tiller for the rudder. A couple pumps. Here you went with the more traditional Lego cannon designs. Because it's slightly bigger and it represents the larger guns they had on the lower decks. Oh, there's some neat spots here. Is this like cannonballs coming into the ship? Cannonballs entering and just smashing. <laughs> and you've got a nice mix of uh, characters in here, minifigure designs. And then, of course... And 
then this comes off in two parts. And here's the Orloff deck where there were a number of petty officers' cabins. So there's the treasury at the back, the admiral's capturings, just like a hallway, the sail room, the carpenter's store, the mech, like the um, armory, the doctor's office, the purser's kind of the where they gave out the food to each of the um, men. There's the doctor's office, and he's got a lot of animals in there. Someone's cabin, and that's where they stored the anchor rope. Which it was very heavy hemp rope, and they needed all the slatting to let it dry out. And there are some chests, officers' chests, or men's chests. We, ha we have some uh, medical emergency going on here. Yeah, <laughs> an amputation. <laughs> I also love this brick separator in the, the treasure room here. The little treasure, the brick <laughs> separator. These sections kind of come out in smaller parts here. And here's the hold. What is this area? The hold. So there's a brig, uh, various crates and barrels, and a odd shrine thing. Just there's the shot lockers where they kept all the cannonballs. There's the magazine, more barrels, and just other crazy things. Some very unique artifacts down here. Yes. <laughs> so were you able to find pretty uh, detailed plans then for the HMS Victory in terms of the layout that kind of represented each of these sections? Yes, pretty much. And then down there is the bilge. <laughs> I love all the rats down there. <laughs> very true to life bilge. <laughs> so as as you're working on this build, uh, did you plan to have all of these detailed interiors and kind of have to uh, make sure that each deck was strong enough to support that as you built the outside of the ship? My original plan was just to do above the waterline, but then I wanted to do the interiors of below, so I just did below the waterline and yeah. it turned out pretty well, I think. No, I think so. This is fantastic. So there's so much detail inside here. How, how long is the whole ship, and do you have any idea how many pieces are in it? I have no idea how many pieces are in it, and it's 5 feet 3 inches long from the balconies at the stern to the bowsprit at the front. That is very, very impressive. All of your, your cargo and your barrels here. <laughs> What, what is the toughest part about designing a ship like this? Obviously, you've got these interiors, but just the, the outside of it, I mean, every, everything about this. Well, all the curvature, the wooden, all these wooden ships, they had very unique curves, but that are kind of hard to replicate. So I had to build it all and shape it. And it was pretty difficult. Is there a kind of experimentation involved there in terms of getting that shaping correct? Yeah, quite a bit of experimentation. I might actually just redo some of this stuff when I get home. It's, it's, all, it's an ongoing project. That's great. I love to see what you've had so far, though. So talk about that process then of bringing it to a show, because I know you said some stuff got kind of moved around in shipment. Yes. Well, all the decks lift off, and we transported it deck by deck. We put each of the decks in a box, and they all were transported over here. And we drove, of course. With that with our dogs, which was kind of a pain, but we're up here, so. <laughs> well, I love seeing all of the decks laid out on the table here. It just shows, I mean, it, the build is so impressive when they're all stacked up, but then once you lay them all out, you see just how much Lego real estate you have into this build. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's super impressive. So do you have plans to add any other uh, ships of this style in this era to the fleet or just continue working on this one? Well, I am working on HMS Warrior, which is the Royal, the Royal Navy's first armored warship, which is going to be about that big, like from there to the bow of this, probably. So almost like twice as long or close to it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, that, that's it. And I also want to do SS Great Britain, which is Brunel's steamer and really is an influential ship, so. 
Well, that, those sound like some exciting projects. This is certainly a very impressive build here. So thank you so much for not only bringing it to the show, but also kind of taking apart the decks to show us inside. I appreciate it. Thank you.